Hello everybody and welcome back to RP1. As you may have noticed from the thumbnail, we are getting closer and closer to our goal of putting an object on the moon. But we are going to start off today's episode with a plane build because we are uh, getting close to finishing that program as well. And we do have uh, an optional contract, but a contract nonetheless, to get to 110 kilometers above the surface. We are going to be building a new plane for this, however. Uh, there is just a, a few changes to the Starship that I would have needed to make that would have required uh, enough of a significant rebuild that I decided just to do something different for this particular contract itself. And unfortunately, I was uh, a little low on time when I was recording this, and as much as I would have loved to recreate uh, an X-plane that had historically passed the Carmen line. Unfortunately, I just decided to curl my way through it, uh, throw together something that works, and uh, see how it goes from there. Right here, I am comparing the most advanced uh, Stringer tanks that we have to the uh, only option of isogrid tanks that we have. And for this, I think I'm going to use the uh, XL uh, XLR99, which is uh, the heaviest duty rocket engine that we've got so far. And in my testing, I find out that the most basic isogrid tank still weighs less than the most advanced stringer tank that I have access to anyways. And so we are going to go with the isogrid. Uh, this thing, uh, this engine burns for quite a while. It has uh, quite a long rated. But as we see here, uh, it takes quite a lot of fuel or uh, quite a lot of volume in order to max out its burn time. So, unfortunately, we're not going to max that out. We're just going to use the 126.15 burn time that we have currently. Uh, extend it out a little bit later. Uh, and as you see here, this is kind of what I was talking about as far as, like, I just, just did it the curb away. Uh, these wings are in no means uh, efficient in RSS. They're not really... You're, you're really supposed to do the procedural. They, that's the best way to, to go about it. Uh, however, wing design takes uh, uh, a bit of time and uh, can be fairly tedious. And like I mentioned, I only had a short amount of time to record. Uh, so I did throw this together a little bit haphazardly. But uh, nonetheless, I think it turns out to be an interesting mission. We are going to need to throw some RCS on here. Uh, and unfortunately, for some reason, whenever I put RCS on uh, the back of the craft, if it's not actually attached to... Uh, a tank with RCS uh, fuel in it, I seem to lack the control. Maybe I'm doing something incorrectly, but uh, as far as I know, uh, I needed to do that, so that's why I have the little two little radial tanks there, spherical tanks. Uh, throw some landing gear on here, but kind of, again, just, you know, slapdash, and so we're going to adjust that a little bit later. I also throw on some air brakes, which will be uh, very nice because when we pass the Carmen line, we come come back down quite fast, and uh, having an extra way of braking will help. Uh, we throw some parachutes on the center of mass to help us just land uh, softly, but we also throw a parachute on the cockpit because uh, we do have it attached to a decoupler, so in case anything happens, we can... Uh, we can bring that cockpit out and uh, save our pilot. We're also gonna throw a heat shield on here. Um, I, I make several attempts to utilize it uh, as kind of like an emergency re-entry thing. Just ditch the body of the plane and just re-enter with just the capsule and hopefully uh, that'll be a little bit safer. Unfortunately, we never really got the opportunity to use it because uh, uh, every time that I tried to separate from the plane body and use the capsule itself, it ended up being more disastrous uh, and just not worth its time. I throw on some radial SRBs here. Uh, like I mentioned in my test, I was hoping to utilize that heat shield, but uh, yeah, they didn't really do anything. It wasn't really worth my while. So instead, we're going to put on the air brakes, uh, put the parachutes back on, and... Uh, set this out we had a decent test flight so we're going to go ahead and build ourselves or renovate our launch complex or excuse me our hangar we're going to renovate it 
and then get that plane ready to go. But while that is cooking, we have the gold uh, Goldbird Science Satellite 1, which is the, I think like the third version of it we've done. And we are now aiming for the moon yet again. Um, I did make some minor adjustments. I lessened some of the fuel, so hopefully uh, we can we can get a flyby or an impact or at least close enough to look at the thing uh, before we overshoot it entirely. This rocket is kind of overbuilt. I feel like I need to simplify it a little bit uh, or maybe utilize different engine technology or a different stage. We do now have the option of using deep space avionics, which will uh, allow us to make adjustments much farther out uh, in space than we can with our current avionics. So maybe we'll have to make a, a three-stage rocket, you know, two stages to get it to orbit, and then that third stage will be the TLI translunar injection stage. Um, I'm kind of just blowing through the orbital part of this launch. I'm just going very fast through the footage because it's kind of the same as, uh, as it had been in the previous few episodes. Also, I did forget to take any kind of cinematic shots, so mainly, uh, mainly we're just doing this through our uh, windows and data. So, even if we don't hit the moon, even if we don't fly by it, um, we still have this contract for cosmic ray satellite beyond low Earth orbit. And uh, we do have that science uh, equipment on board, so if nothing else, we'll be able to hopefully nail down some more of that contract. As we see here, our trajectory is going to put us out into an escape trajectory of Earth, uh, significantly overshooting the moon. And as we see here, we're getting close, and we make a little uh, um, flyby right there. We've passed into the sphere of influence, and I desperately try to kill our throttle uh, to maintain it so we don't pass through entirely and miss it. We get a 7 million meter uh, apoapsis, or, uh, well, 7 millimeter apoapsis above the moon. It is our periapsis, but, uh, which is not close enough to satisfy the flyby contract. We have to be a, a very, uh, sc we have to scream through at 5,000 meters above the surface. Uh, thankfully, we do have a significant amount of RCS fuel. So we are going to play around with our direction uh, and utilize that RCS to hopefully adjust our uh, approach. If I could have gotten a closer approach uh, and had a smaller craft, uh, smaller tonnage, this would have been a little bit easier. But as far as we're concerned right now, we're doing the heavy satellites program and so uh, got quite a bit of weight to move around with such tiny thrusters. And we're over halfway uh, depleted of our nitrous oxide and uh, we still have not crossed even 1 million meters closer. So unfortunately this is not a viable uh, means of changing our uh, well, our destiny, you know, we, we were going to head off into deep space, never to see the moon at all. But we we panicked and killed our thrust, which wasn't easy. We had to actually kill, we had to go back out of map view into this view, and then we had to kill Mech Jeb, and then we could kill our throttle. So it's not very accurate. It's not accurate in any way if I want to try to pursue a moon program this uh, this is not the way to do it. We are going to have to rethink our design a little bit, but nonetheless, this is, you know, an active mission. We have solar panels on our craft now. I did forget to mention that we added those. Um, and that was the main problem in our previous episode where we attempted to see the moon. And that was because we ran out of solar, uh, uh, we ran out of electrical charge. So not this time. So we come in cinematically for our approach. Uh, unfortunately, we are quite high above the surface, so we don't get the, the best resolution of it, but I did put in the highest resolution moon that I could when we installed our RSS Reborn, so I am super excited to see it up close and personal. 
But unfortunately, this is as close as we are going to get in today's episode. In the next episode, I think we're going to try to really man uh, figure out our fuel situation and our trajectory and really nail down a solid approach. Uh, and hopefully we can get close enough to get the uh, lunar flyby. And you know what? If we miss the flyby and we end up hitting it entirely, well, that's a contract itself. So I'm looking forward to it. And like I mentioned before, the ultimate goal for our series uh, in this season is to land something on the moon safely. Um, I don't know that I'm skilled enough to do pilots. Uh, crewed flight is a whole other beast when it comes to realism overhaul and real solar system. But ideally... Before I could really consider this season, you know, handled and successful and feel comfortable, you know, starting again and trying something else, uh, trying to be a little faster, I feel like landing something on the moon would be a significant achievement. So we're going to go for that. Um, in one of my previous videos, I don't know how far back now, I guess this was the last RP1 as of this uh as of this recording, the last RP1 we did, we uh, I took a little side to show how to kind of speed run the first program using the U1250 engine. Um, and I'm actually kind of excited to try that out. I really want to see what kind of success we can have if we focus solely on the rockets and solely on the U1250 uh, as our program. I think I might forego X-Planes for a little bit in that playthrough. But, uh, but, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. We haven't even gotten there. Currently, we are now on an escape trajectory. Actually, we're already out of Earth's sphere of influence. We are now uh, in a solar orbit and uh, don't have a very good communication. So I don't think we're going to be getting uh, a lot of science from this. But we can collect as much as we can while we still have communications with Earth. Um, this will be... Uh, this will be collecting science for 38 days, and we actually have some stuff going on back at the KSC during this time. So uh, we've already transmitted 16 points worth of science, and I think we're, instead of just following that probe until its inevitable uh, demise from battery or communication loss, uh, we're just going to go back and get Stuart Kelly trained up for his mission. We're going to spend that 16 points immediately and fully a 1960s orbital rocketry because I do think that that will be much more helpful for us going on. We are in 1965. We're pretty far away from realistic timelines and whatnot, but nonetheless, I've been having fun and learning quite a bit. And like I mentioned, I'm excited to apply that to the next season. But for now, let's go ahead and get Stuart Kelly in the cockpit on the launch pad and airlift it up. Uh, his goal today is to pass 110 kilometers. However, our uh, secondary goal is to actually push past that, past the Carmen line, and reach the 150 kilometer milestone. So, first time using the XLR99, and it went off without a hitch, which is always nice to see. We're using our nitrous oxide RCS immediately, even though they're not very efficient. It does help us pitch up a little bit. Which, uh, which is crucial in these first few moments because getting a nice upward uh, trajectory will help us break the Kármán line. And this is essentially more rocket than plane, but it does have the ability to glide down. And we easily pass the 150 kilometer mark. We actually go up to 167. We still have almost 14 seconds worth of burn time remaining, and in our test, I realized I decided that our approach to this mission is going to be a little unorthodox. Uh, yes, yeah, we just passed the crude altitude record of 150, so that was uh, very successful. But our our method that we're going to use to kind of <laughs> bleed off some of the speed as we re-enter is we're actually going to point ourselves retrograde uh, as best we can and fire off the last of our fuel in a hope uh, to slow down. But it is uh, fairly uncontrollable that way. After all, this is not a rocket. It is a plane and it's not meant to really do that maneuver. So we're gonna fall and spin. We did lose a little bit of speed, but that's all we got. Stuart Kelly, unfortunately, is uh, not above 
succumbing to G-forces and promptly passed out for a little bit. Uh, thankfully, regained consciousness. Um, still spinning, much less violently, but still uh, to an uncomfortable degree until eventually he flattens out and comes in for a nosedive. Pulling up, we have no more fuel left in our tank. We used the last of it to try to cancel out that spin. But we are gliding now. We still have a little bit of RCS to give us a little more control. And you know what? We're actually close enough to the KSC that might as well go for a landing. In a lot of my tests, I just bailed out in the water and just let it uh, parachute to safety. But uh, I came a lot closer in the real flight than I did before. And it's about this time when I'm hitting my landing gear realizing that I don't have any. I took them off. Uh, <laughs> uh, at one point I realized I was just going to do a water landing so I decided to do no gears which is not great. And then as I staged my parachutes I realized I had my uh, emergency abort system at the wrong stage so we're going to go ahead and take another attempt at it. You know this was, uh, this was a flight that wasn't uh, wasn't going right, but not because the the mission itself was bad, but my flying skills were poor. And uh, you know what? Landing with no landing gears is uh, not exactly the smartest. So on this third and final pass, Stuart Kelly is going to do better or call it a life because uh, we're going to take our situation. I, I can't uh, reload my quick save more than three times and feel okay with it. So we're gonna try to stall our craft out uh, to lo lose some of that speed and come down flat. And with the loss of the XLR99 engine, uh, I don't feel too bad about that. I think uh, keeping Stuart Kelly alive was much better. Gets 124 days added on to his uh, career, so he's not gonna retire till 1969, uh, another four years from now. And, uh, yeah, we earned some science from that. Not a lot, but, uh, nonetheless, we finished the last optional altitude flight. We have two more missions in the X-Plane program, uh, that we will be getting to soon. But I, like I mentioned before, in the next episode, I do want to focus more on the, the mon the moon, excuse me, the, the moon flyby and impact. I'm pretty happy with the progress we made today. We're going to have to wait to see whether or not that Goldbird Sci Satellite can complete the contract, and so we'll look at that in the next one. But anyways, that is where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more RP1. If you did, think about subscribing. Drop me a like, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.